Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio. In this tutorial, we will be making a procedural brick texture. Let's set up a simple three-point lighting setup. Select the light and change it to a spotlight. Scale it down. Move it to the back of the cube. This is our backlight, so we will change the power to 2000. Duplicate the backlight and move it to the front of the cube and rotate it. This is going to be our fill light, so we'll change the power to 2500. Duplicate the fill light and move it to the left and rotate it. This is our key light, so we'll change the power to 3000. Under the shading workspace, select the cube and add a brick texture node. Now let's look at the options available to us with the brick texture node. The color output is the texture output color, which is what we'll use to connect it to the BSDF shader. The factor output is the mortar mass, where 1 is equal to mortar and 0 means no mortar. The offset property determines the brick offset of the various rows. The frequency property determines the offset frequency. The squash property determines the amount of brick squashing. The second frequency property determines the squash frequency. The color 1 and color 2 inputs affect the color of the brick. The mortar input affects the color of the mortar. The scale input affects the overall texture scale. The mortar size input affects the size of the mortar between the bricks. The mortar smooth input blurs the edges between the mortar and the bricks. The bias input affects the variation of the brick colors. The brick width input affects the width of the bricks. And the row height input affects the height of the bricks. Connect the color output of the brick texture node to the base color input of the BSDF shader. Notice that the brick texture is working on the top of the cube, but it's stretched or non-existent on the other sides of the cube. We can fix this problem easily. Add a texture coordinate node. Connect the UV output from the texture coordinate node to the vector input of the brick texture node. This fixes the initial problem, but we're now left with very large bricks and the orientation is wrong. We can fix this by tabbing into edit mode. Open the UV mapping menu with U and select cube projection. Now tab back into object mode. Now we can change the color of the bricks. Select a color for color 1.
and selected color for color two. Then select a color for the mortar. Now we can add a bit of texture to the bricks. So add a noise texture. The noise texture node evaluates the fractal purlin noise, which is a type of gradient noise used to increase the appearance of realism. Well, let's look at the options available to us with the noise texture node. The factor output is the value of the fractal noise. The color output is the color of the fractal noise. The dimension property determines the dimensions of the space to evaluate the noise. Vector input is used to evaluate the noise. If it's left unconnected, it just defaults to generated. Scale input affects the scale of the noise octaves. The detail input affects the number of noise octaves. And the distortion input affects the amount of the distortion. If we connect the color output from the noise texture node to the base color input of the BSDF node, we can see the color that the node produces. If we connect the factor output of the noise texture node to the base color of the BSDF shader, we can now see the black and white noise the node produces. If we change the scale to around 500, we'll now see a stuccoed type texture look. Reconnect the color output from the brick texture to the base color input of the BSDF shader. Now it's important if you want to use the same colors for the bricks you currently use, write down the hex code. You'll see why in a moment. Connect the factor output of the noise texture to color 1 and color 2 of the brick texture. Now we can see the noise texture, but we've lost our color. We can easily fix this by adding a color ramp node. The color ramp node maps values to colors with the use of a gradient. So let's look at the options available to us with the color ramp node. The color output is the color of the gradient. The alpha is the alpha or transparency of the gradient. The color ramp property allows you to choose the color and the mixture of colors for the gradient. And the factor property is used as an index for the color ramp. Move the color ramp node onto the noodle between the noise texture factor and the color 2 of the brick texture. Now select the white color stop and change the color. Add a second color ramp and place it on the noodle between the noise texture factor and the color one of the brick texture. Click on the white color stop and change the color. The mortar is generally not this smooth in real life. So let's make 
the mortar look a little bit more realistic. Add another noise texture. Connect the factor output of the noise texture to the mortar smooth of the brick texture. If we increase the scale of the noise texture to about 500, we notice that the mortar has become a bit more realistic looking. Add another color ramp and place it on the noodle between the noise texture and the mortar smooth. If we change the location of the black and white color stops, we get a more realistic look to the mortar. The black color stop will take away information, essentially moving the mortar over the bricks. The white color stop will add information, essentially moving the mortar away from the bricks. Slide the color stops along the gradient until you achieve a look that you like. Now we are ready to add some displacement to the brick texture. We can easily do this with a few nodes. Add a displacement node. Connect the displacement output of the displacement node to the displacement input of the material output node. The displacement node is used to displace the surface along the surface normal. Let's look at the options available to us with the displacement node. The object space property means the displacement scales along with the object. The height input affects the distance to displace the surface along the normal. The mid-level input affects the neutral displacement value that causes no displacement. The scale input affects the amount of displacement. And the normal input is where we connect the normal map node. Let's add a normal map node. Connect the normal output from the normal map node to the normal input of the displacement node. The normal map node generates a normal from an RGB normal map image. Let's look at the options available to us with the normal map node. The normal output is used as an input for other nodes, usually the BSDF shader. The space property affects the RGB color. Tangent space supports object transformation and mesh deformations. Object space sticks to the surface under the object transformations, and world space does not stick to the surface under object transformations. The UV map property is the name of the UV map from which we derive normal mapping tangents. The strength property affects the strength of the normal map effect, and the color property affects the RGB color that encodes the normal map. Now connect the color output of the brick texture to the color input of the normal map. The 
You can now change the strength of the normal map to get the desired look. And there you have a simple procedural brick texture. I hope you found this useful. Have a good day.